OK, continuing the Olympics now and the controversy surrounding yesterday's women's boxing bout, which saw Algeria's Imen Kelly beat Italy's Angela Carini in just 46 seconds. We can cross live to Paris now and join our senior reporter, Geraint Hughes. Geraint, how's this story developing today? What can you tell us? What's the latest? Yeah, I think as, as expected, the, the IOC uh, this morning, uh, they put on a briefing. Uh, we're going to be inundated with questions about yesterday. It, it clearly dominated, I suppose, away from the sport. Uh, this story when the, the Algerian boxer Iman Khalifi fought the Italian uh, Angela Carini. Obviously, the bout only lasting 46 seconds. And then we've had the fallout in, in various directions, various opinions and, and politics, and geopolitics coming into play on this as well. I think where we start with now is where this, where this, uh, where this story now has developed, where it's moved on in terms of clarity, because it's a story that, that has facts, but is becoming confusing and complicated uh, because the facts are being blurred. First of all, why are two boxers, two female boxers, be allowed to compete here at the Olympics. Algeria's Iman Khalifi, as I mentioned there, but also a Taiwanese boxer as well, uh, Lu Yingting. They have been allowed to compete here at the IAC because they have, they are within the eligibility rules of the IOC. Now, the clarification here has been reiterated by the IOC, but they've also gone a little bit further in exactly why, in their view, the IOC, these two female boxers are competing at the Olympics. Listen carefully now to what Mark Adams, who is the IOC's spokesman, had to say about this this morning. It was an arbitrary decision taken overnight by the CEO and then subsequently agreed later. It may have had something to do with the results beforehand, not liking the results that, 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 that had happened. But we, we, we don't really know. We haven't had that. And there are suspicions all the time about, or can be suspicions about people's uh, sex. Uh, unfortunately, it's not up to, or fortunately, it's not up to us to act on all those suspicions because if we did, um, I think we would be dealing with that from now till forever. Uh, so the eligibility on this specific issue is uh, if they, their national document, their passport, has them as a woman. And just to kind of reiterate, um, the Algerian boxer was born female, was registered female, lived her life as a female, boxed as a female, has a female passport. This is not a transgender case. I, just, I know you're not saying that, but uh, there has been some confusion that somehow it's a man fighting a woman. This is just not the case, it's scientifically. On that, there is consensus. Scientifically, this is not a man fighting a woman. Are, are these athletes women? The answer is yes, according to eligibility, according to their passports, according to their history. Um, a, a test which may ha have happened overnight was a made-up test, which is new. I don't think we should give that any credence at all. If we start acting on, on every issue, every allegation that comes up, uh, then we start having the kind of witch hunts that we're, that we're having now. Geraint, can you just explain again, this is a complicated issue, isn't it, involving politics as well? Yeah, just before Mark Adams made the IOC's position clear in terms of you know, the, the gender eligibility of the two boxers, the fact that they are uh, not just female on their passports, but they were registered as female at birth, have lived as females, boxed as females. Um, it's, it, you heard just the beginning there, Mark Adams was alluding to um, sus suspicious tests. Those allude to uh, tests taken, eligibility tests taken by the two boxers at another boxing competition last year, the World Championships. Now, they were, came under the sanctioning of the IBA, the International Boxing Association. Now, those tests, we have no knowledge. I've been given no, not, uh, no responses to, to my queries about what those tests were, what they were subjected to, and maybe whatever levels of those tests were, were revealed. All we know is they were arbitrary tests taken on behalf of two people within the IBA, two senior executives, the, the chief exec and the president. I have no idea, nor does anyone, what those tests actually were that led to the suspension of these, the Algerian boxer and the Taiwanese boxer in 2023 at the World Championships at Delhi. To explain the politics of this before, prior to that, they had uh, boxed as female boxers at IBA-sanctioned events. 
Now, the IBA and the IOC, to put it mildly, this is a huge understatement, have fallen out. They do not like one another. The IBA, uh, some senior executives are openly mocking the IOC president uh, in videos that have been posted. In 2019, the IOC suspended uh, the IBA from uh, sanctioning events at the Olympics. Uh, and in 2023, they were thrown out of the Olympic family. Here in Paris, boxing is under special measures. It is uh, being run by an independent IOC boxing committee because the IBA is not allowed to do that. The reasons being were uh, suspicions around corruption, uh, corruption around refereeing, financial uh, regulation and, and, and governance. So that is why the IOC threw the IBA out of the Olympic family. Now, the IBA has strong links with Russia and with allied states along with Russia. Herein, herein the geopolitics that are, are at play here. Um, between the IBA, who, as I say, have heavy links with Russia, uh, Russia are banned, barred from competing at these Olympics a, as well. So you have a whole host of geopolitics swirling around, unfortunately, with two athletes at the centre of this. There are other politics at stage as well, with the Italian boxer yesterday, Angela uh, Carini. Um, uh, th there are some suspicions as well that the Italian government, who have been quite vocal uh, about, the f about the bout yesterday, um, politically, uh, they have uh, views which uh, um, will work to the, to the right of their domestic audience uh, there. And Georgia Maloney, the Prime Minister, made those views clear. The Families Minister made those views clear uh, as well. So you, you have a, another swirl, a mix of politics yesterday, because there was an Italian boxer uh, fighting yesterday. On top of this uh, as well, we've gone through the gender eligibility and the issue used there as well. But there's also been concerns from the United Nations and from the UK government. Just is the safety of women at these games at the heart and centre of decision making by the IOC? A perfectly legitimate and valid consideration. One which the culture, se uh, the culture secretary, the Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport, who is here uh, in Paris, addressed uh, with us uh, this morning. It was a very uncomfortable watch. It was an incredibly short watch, but incredibly uncomfortable to see. And I know from being here in Paris that there are a lot of women competitors who are very concerned, not just about whether we're getting the balance right between inclusion, fairness and safety in boxing, but in other sports as well. Successive governments have always said that these are often quite complex biological matters. In this case, I think it is more complex than is being presented on social media. And so it's right that sporting bodies take those decisions but I have a role, the government has a role to make sure that they have the guidance, the support and the advice that they need to be able to make those decisions and get that balance right. I know that boxing is very much under the spotlight right now and rightly so because in boxing in particular biology matters uh, and you have to make sure that it's safe and that it's fair um, and I'm sure there'll be an ongoing debate about the, the way in which that balance has been reached in boxing but it's my job to make sure that I'm talking to all of the sporting bodies to make sure that they've got the right guidance and support to get those decisions right. So as you can garner there from uh, Lisa Nandy, the Secretary of State, and also from Mark Adams from the IOC, there are a, a myriad of views and issues here which we've, we've tried to cover. You, I would urge you as well, if you are trying to gather more information on this, go to the Sky Sports app, go to skysports.com. There's a very, very good article which has been published there which explains the story and also about DSD, which is di Differences in Sexual Development. It's very well explained on the article that is published there as well. Uh, also, so just to bring you some more facts as well, because there were concerns yesterday when the Italian boxer left the ring about the power uh, of the, the Algerian boxer, that there was an advantage there. Um, we've looked at the stats of both boxers here that, who are under the spotlight, the Algerian and the Taiwanese boxer. Uh, Iman Khalif has had 37 bouts, five knockouts. The Taiwanese boxer, 40 bouts, one knockout. Those are the stats.